What's up? We're the Cauldron Boys here with our very first podcast for you where we're bubbling, brewing, and boiling new commanders. I'm Joe, aka Noble Truth. What's up, guys? I'm Mike Javel. You can call me Mike. Uh, you can find me over here at the Ironborn with uh, Joe and our main man down here. I'm Bruce Bubbles, also known as Greg, heavily playing on our Ironborn Gaming Discords. That's right. Check us out on Ironborn Gaming for our CDH Tournament Eternal. It's an ongoing perpetual league. Anybody's welcome at any time. All right, today, free entry. We're doing free entry. That's right. We're looking at our very first upcoming commander, the Mothman, and we are very hype about him. His abilities, we already have the second one. Whenever one or more non-land cards are milled, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each of up to X target creatures, where X is the number of non-lands milled this way. And what's crazy and, about this commander is that they left some key things off, like, you know, only during your turn and once per turn, you know? So we can really break this thing. We can do stuff on opponent's turns, on our turn. It yeah, doesn't they really matter. pulled all the strings out of this, and uh, no, there's no restrictions. So we're, we're nowhere a food chain deck. And the two cards we're going to be using with that, right? Eternal Scourge and Miss Hollow Griffin. That's right. Both cards allow us to cast from exile, thusly creating infinite mana, thusly Recasting our commander. This so, will give everybody an infinite amount of rad counters. Then whenever they move to their upkeep in their first pre-combat main phase, they would mill their whole deck, taking one damage per card and thus killing them on their first main phase of each. Kind of mean. It's kind of mean. So you infinitely play Mothman and just pass turn. What do you think about this, Mike? People are allowed to respond at, at instant speed, which is a big deal in CDH. So being able to respond at instant speeds with the with the death on the stack, unless you're playing uh, Born Upon a Wind or something like that where you can respond to the trigger and really push out a wind at instant speeds, I don't see it happening that way. There are some Grixis decks that'll do that, but... There with... will always be some decks that can get out of it, but in most cases, you would be able to get out of the, the death. Most decks aren't able to play that well at instant speed. And even if that is our main combo, there's always the backup combos. Or backup combos. Playing the deck. Perfect. How else, in case something happens here, what's our next line? Obviously, we're running Thassa's Oracle with dimmer and not run thassa's oracle correct yes yes so that means definitely run thassa's oracle demonic and tainted for sure all right there's our secondary win con just because hey if you if you start the game and you get a tutor in one of them pieces it's kind of simple where to go from there isn't it exactly we also because we're a milling deck we probably are going to be in some reanimation graveyard shenanigans let's finish our combo pieces because i think that's essential yeah i mean we could obviously go uh Hoarding Broodlord combo. Stall and half hoarding Broodlord? We could. I mean, that's a tutor on a stick, you know? We had it's, talked about with, I think that's a good little line for us. And uh, Holberger Horror, I mean, you know, we're obviously running fast mana rocks. So we can, you know, obviously, in a minute. obviously loop them, make infinite colors mana. How are we going to cast other spells? I mean, we're, we're, in a, we're in a three color deck. So what if we do like a uh, Treasure Vault where we can make infinite. Colors mana. Something to dump it into? Yeah, mana sink. I like that as a little backup spot. I like that. Our combo pieces. Right? So we have Hallbreaker Horror. We're going to add the rocks. We have our Mist Hollow and Scourge sitting on Food Chain. We have our Saw in Half and Broodlord. Doss's Oracle, Demcon, and Tainted Pact. Mind Crank, we need to finish. What else are we running with Mind that What combos mind us crank? out? allows for Sir Conrad and Hermit Druids to hurt your opponents. Hermit Druids one line. I like Hermit Druid here. Aside from Mind Crank, two cards I can immediately think of that are going to crack this wide open are Dust Mantle Guild Mage. He allows us to, you know, do the whole opponent mills a card when they take a damage, take a damage mill a card. The loop is going on. And Blood Chief Ascension. Which I think is really Blood neat Chief. here. Once oh, Blood Chief Ascension is activated, it will do lots of work. One card yeah, that in Mind Crank is kind of infinite, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, one. I believe so. I believe that's just it. Yeah, when the card's put in a bunch of graveyard, three one. more counters, they lose two, they mill two, you gain two, they mill two. Pseudo infinite. Hermit Druid, we added to the pile here. 
but also it will mill our whole library, which allows us a line on dread return, which is like way down the line of backups. Not to mention, you could hit the Thassa Oracle off of reanimate too. There you go. If we're going to work with the graveyard a little bit, we're probably going to want a Yogg's Will, right? Yes, a Yogg's Will would be good just in case we need that as a backup. Yeah, something to run Always from the graveyard. Redundancies is amazing. Right, right, right. Okay, uh, so milling ourselves to oblivion and then doing something is the, is the is the more direct win con. I'm starting to think. You could even throw in something like one of the mm -hmm. shuffle titans, so you could repeat it with singer like Sir Conrad. Well, the problem with that is it turns Hermit Druid into a stalemate, doesn't it? Because you'll never ever stop milling. Yeah. Oh no, it'll go all the way through and the Titan trigger won't go back on the stack until it's done resolving. So that'll actually kill your Thoracle line. So we can't do we can't do that. We did talk about this. Displacer kitten. Are we There's on that? Blinking, Are we still on that? Blinking, yeah, blinking Mothman is helpful as well. Right. Whether you're Especially... recasting him or blinking him, it's great. And all right, so we're gonna run Displacer Kitten as our I mean, these are all essential combo pieces in the Salt Eye Color Wheel. We can make infinite mana with Displacer Kitten with Eternal Witness, which we should probably be running anyway. Correct? Am I? Are we all in yes. agreement there? Eternal Witness, because we're self milling. Definitely need Eternal. Witness. Right. We're gonna want some return removal return, but Dark Ritual. So you cast Dark Ritual, or Cabal Ritual, um, Displacer Kitten. The spell resolves. You get three mana. You blink, you blink eternal witness, dark ritual back to your hand, cast it for one, make two, blink, cast it for one, make two. It'll give you an infinite amount of black. That's just one line. What if you mill your whole library and then you want to dread return Oracle, but you need your tainted packed out? That's going to get it for you. You know what else is going to get it for you? I think Noxious Revival. Is that a, is that a logical ad? I think so. Yes, Noxious Revival in green is a good ad. All right. We're already up to 22 cards, and that's all our combo and win cons. So mind you, we need to be pretty selective about the rest of our choices. Now, we had mentioned this. You know, we want to add our, our tutors that we're already going to need, right? Yep. Yep. Empiric, Demonic. Imp Empiric Tutor, Demonic Tutor, Wishclaw, Grim. Um, what are, what else are we going to need for tutor wise? Probably going to want our mystical tutor in tomb. <laughs> there you go. We're going to need our in tomb. All right. Reanimate. Can't stop. Don't stop me now. Buried alive. Uh, what about diabolic intent? Mm. Let's get our creature count at the end. I'm not opposed uh, to it. Worldly tutor for the creature. Worldly. Green tutor. But what else? Finale. Finale, yeah, of course. Do we want to run cord? Yeah. Well, here's the know. options, in my opinion. When you need to really settle down on tutors, quarter calling is nice because of the combo. But that invasion of Ikoria is pretty sweet as well. I would rather have the invasion over the court. Why is that? The invasion flips into a pretty badass creature on the backside. I mean, I'm going to block this. It doesn't matter. It's going to hit you anyways. It's pretty sick. I'm dealing damage to you, and you don't have a choice. Yeah, that, that's what the backside says. It just gives give you the chance to an eight eight, but also just the straight up tutor for a two plus act. Really not yes. bad. So we're, so we're on that overcord. I'm with it. So now we're looking at mystical, worldly, vampiric, demonic, cabal, demonic ritual, grim tutor. Uh, we got reanimate, buried alive, and tomb. Do we need more tutors? Um, what is that? Nine ten right there. Nine, that feels pretty okay. At a, at a certain yeah. point, you start adding tutors, yeah. you start going slower. It's true. The only other tutor that we should add, I believe, Beseech the Mirror. Beseech the Mirror is that, that plus any other combo piece that we need. So let's add the rest of the absolute, absolute Saltai staples we have. Bam, here's our fast mana package. All right, let's do counter spells real quick. Eight counter spells is the optimal amount. Some people are on nine or ten, and I guess it all depends on your meta. Offer you can't refuse. Here's Guardian shit. Um, how do y'all feel about mana drain? Mm, two two blue pips is a lot. Two blue pips is a lot, but it is a ritual. Well, we got force of will. Man we got force, one of those if you want. Force of negation. We have mind break. Land base. 
that'll make it easier. So we're looking at offer, fierce guardianship, force of negation, force of will, mental misstep, mind break trap, pact of negation, and fluster storm and swan song. Adding your classic psych rift. Yeah, we got to account for interaction. And deadly robbery. Chain of vapor. Sure. Uh, dismember. Uh, definitely deluge. Do we like dismember? Yeah. I do. I am hot on dismember, and for me, that's always like the hundred and first card. Well, let's talk yeah. about. I mean, um, March. March of Swirling Mist is, a, to me, one of the better removals. It's not even removal, but it opens up shit, you know, opens it up for especially the sax pieces right out of your way. Just enough to play what you got to play. I mean, it's really good yeah, against, like, Dothies. We got a pretty nice little deck here already. You know, here we are at I, at this point. We got eight, nine counter spells. All right. We have a bit mana rocks. We're going to need another, some more mana dorks. We need a couple. It's just the way it is. So mana dork wise. We forgot Bowmaster and Op Agent. Full creatures like Bowmaster and Opposition Agent for sure. Definitely not Dothy. And tell, <laughs> tell me why. Tell me why no Dothy. Because we want graveyards. We want graveyards. Dothy That's takes right. them away. We, want we don't want them to go away. We want, oh, if we want graveyards, then I, I'm going to assume we want Mnemonic Betrayal. It is a win con itself. In a pinch. You could find an answer to somebody else's problems. And I like right. that about that. Like um, if you just only get that card so you can deadly rollick somebody and get a and get a free counter spell or something else to protect it, then so what? If that enables you, then you know what? I think that's a good use of that card. Although it's clearly much better if you can just find your win line. Let's go back to talk about creatures and mana dorks. Death right trauma, a delighted halfling, a kami of whispered hopes. That's hot, even though it's a three drop. Hardened skills, double counters. Hardened skills. Oh, mystic, ristic. Do um, we do? Are we on Adnaws? Are we on? No, I would do Peer into the Abyss over Adnaws because we have some big, expensive creatures. Peer into the Abyss in this deck, I think, is better because you just lose half your life and get, to get half those your cards, life, which is in this deck in way instance, better than I would... seven cards with it. Why is Pier to the Abyss better than Bolas' Citadel? And Citadel yeah. leaves for some good good janks, like leaving a counter spell on top of your library and passing turn. I like Citadel also. <laughs> you can't. What is that red card? Changes targets. Deflecting Swat. Deflecting you, Swat. Yeah, you can't Deflecting Swat a, a Bolas' Citadel, but you can definitely Deflecting Swat a Pier to the Abyss. <laughs> that <is> would be <laughs> very sad. <laughs> That's big That's sad, true. right? Target player, me! <laughs> I would remove Peer into the Abyss for the deflecting swap purposes, for sure. Yeah, and it's hot. Deflecting swap's hot. Do we ever play a game where you don't see a deflecting swap from red? Like, ever? Never. Nah. Never. Nah. Um, ever. It never happens. quickly, back on the creatures for mana dorks, there are two more. They're not necessarily mana dorks, but we're not in red, and they would be great possible mana dorks. Flesh duplicate and a phantasmal image. Copy somebody's dog. What about oh Evolution Sage? Wasn't it you who mentioned Evolution Sage to me? Evolution Sage is another mana dork as well who taps for 1 1 counters. Hold on, hold Let's on. Let's see. The flesh, the flesh duplicate, Greg? Oh my God, bro. I'm going to cast Dog Side. All right, cool. That's cool. Me right. too. Uh, me too, and Doc. I, <laughs> yeah, but I also like Metamorph. Again, uh, it doesn't cost you any colored mana. It's just three colorless. We have basically space for one. So before we add one card, let's really consider what are we missing here? So I'm sitting here and I'm thinking one card, and that's that's Gilded Drake. What about Walking Ballista? I do Where like Walking Ballista, though. Holy crap, man. I mean, we're, I gonna, if we're going got... infinite mana. It is just an extra dump. Oh, that's a use for Eternal Witness. It is sure. a it is a huge dump. Yeah, it's a it's a very good use for the potential wow. Of black mana. Wow, sir. What about the cauldron? <laughs> I think we pretty much have to put the cauldron in. I mean the cauldron is a good ad. It's meant to be. All right, we need to make a couple cuts. And I'm on that. I am honestly on that. Here's the thing. Because we can entomb a hermit druid, exile it with the cauldron, and immediately mill your library into the dread return. So it enables a lot. There's a lot of silly things you can do by adding cauldron. Uh, not to mention, we, we can pick off uh, key pieces because we're milling everybody. We can pick off yeah, key okay. pieces in their graveyard too. You see a uh, underworld breach hit the field. They're like, hey, I'm, I'm going to cast it. They cast it one time. They try to go through their loop. 
as soon as it resolves, send it off to exile. And then, you know, every time you could do the mill thing, Ballista would be funny to pop a counter on. Because now he's just kind of a removal target, you know? We exactly. don't have any mill in this deck besides what comes Red on Wolfman. So we're missing our Mesmer Corbin. Mind Crank deals damage. Did we not put Mesmer Corbin already? I know, maybe I didn't. That's fine. We can go a couple cards over and make some cuts. I would remove Mox Amber. We don't have a ton of legendaries. Yep. I don't know about hardened scales. We don't have enough 1-1 one, one counter opportunity. We really don't. Because we don't should we be doing some other kinds of mill? Are there any cards that are viable that allow us to mill the opponent? We Whoa. have Sir Conrad. Correct? I did not add him yet. Are we on that? Are we surely on that? Ruin Crab? Ruin Crab is a good one. So right now, all we're doing is we're tutoring and we're Thoracle. We're tutoring and, and food chain winning. Here's the thing. I do like Conrad because that's something to do with the Eternal Witness and Dark Ritual line from Kitten. A replacement for either Ruin or Hedron. Let's replace one of those with Alter on the Brood. Well, we have Reanimate. Just, yes. If we hit a good creature from them, awesome. If not, we're milling them anyway. So we have a couple lines to mill while he's in play. This is a combo of Mind Crank. Oh, Mind Crank, they lose life in mill. So we do, I guess we do like seven or eight sources. Endurance. Endurance, Endurance does put our graveyard back, and so we should want it. It needs to be in this deck. Endurance, bro. Uh, we're going to need this in case things go wrong. It helps us. It also hurts the Breach player. The Breach player, your exact... The Thassa's Oracle, Oracle player. player. Yeah, he, he fills two roles for us in this deck. Uh, he protects our graveyard. But he also the breach stops the breach lines, and he also stops the thoracle lines. He does end thoracle and breach, doesn't it? How to use it when it enters the battlefield? The trigger goes on the stack. You can target yourself, and if you have evoked it, you will also have sacrificed it before you, you return to the graveyard. Trigger stack because you know, right. the controller are both triggers. I think we need to have endurance here. We definitely do need the endurance. All right, we're sitting at seventy-seven, and this is looking pretty juicy right now. We need to make some cuts. What, where are we going? Can't cut Ristic. Can't I think cut Ruin Ristic. Crab at the very top. We should just go ahead and cut. Go ahead and drop yeah. Ruin Crab. It's not that good. Yeah. Not for everything else that we have going on. I. It's not on the par. It's what helpful, do you think, but Mike? It's not as... uh, I agree. Uh, I'm sad yeah. to see Ruin Crab grow. You know, that's the little boy that could. I agree with him. Now we're sitting at uh, about four cards to cut. Where do we go? Gilded Drake. Is it on par with what we're doing, though? Like, I, I guess it, it's, it is a no contingency turn. The thing is, you got to kind of think of it like interaction. Like, you're taking somebody else's something away. It could be a sex piece. Creature-wise, I think we don't want to cut any of them. Move on to the other sections. Okay. All of the creatures look keepable. Maybe Grim. Out of all of those, Grim's the only one I'd be willing to cut at all. That's what I thought. We're, gonna, we're okay making a soft cut here? Yeah. Yeah. I know Beseech I just that three black does is hard it's hard on my soul like I know we're rituals and we have a couple and but three blacks a heavy commitment Beseech cast any card for CMC or less for free additionally no. so it replaces itself immediately yeah if you bargain if you bargain Beseech the mirror you it cast cast a spell. you find for four mana or less for free like anything you find here this we are. Number is another one that is on the questionable. I game. like the card, but I, again, it's always. I love Dismember. But it's, it's always, always my bad. last cut. And this, this is like, <clears throat> and you know me, I play the Saltai colors probably primarily, but this card's always on the block. Rollick, it exiles, but you, it's for CMC if you don't have your commander. If it's been bounced to your hand or if it's been returned to the command zone, then you're paying four for Rollick. But if with the Dismember... Yeah, well, Rollick kills anything. I, I don't think that you can take Rollick over Dismember. Or I don't think that you can consider taking Dismember over Rollick. I think you have to keep Deadly Rollick. The potential upside of the free exiling cast. a problematic piece that with somebody's deck that can get it back versus somebody you can't get it back is super good yeah but, but also, dismember for one in four life let's just keep looking real quick we'll go from there march i don't think it's debatable it's it's kind of too good and i've seen it win enough games for me that i'm sold on this card i wasn't I'm, gonna bring up march i like march i try yeah. to leave it in I'm, as much as possible so i'm still you know i'm still new to the cd so march hasn't made an impact on me i can y'all walk me through it and kind of explain what y'all how y'all so put it this way with it? Have you ever seen a turn one Dranith? 
Yeah. And you want to maybe play your commander on turn two or three and proceed to win. It's one blue handled. It handles stacks pieces. It phases everything out. It takes bow masters out if you want to wheel, which we're not. There's an instance. It just removes problematic pieces in front of you. It also takes bow and masters out if somebody else wants to wheel. If somebody windfalls and wheels and has a bow master out, it handles yeah. that too. It also indexes that where it matters for your commander that you can easily recast him. Uh, it phases out, and they don't have the option of putting it into command zone. Correct. So it's just like ours. <laughs> like Mothman. We are a good target for March as well, but it takes you know away I, the ability to recast the commander. For that turn. More of a protection piece than anything yeah, if we were going to use it that way. You can protect your own stuff for sure, too. Yeah. I did just find a card to add, Culling Ritual. Yeah, no, I like it. That would that would potentially ramp us massively, and I didn't think of that until right now. It's a good card, and I like Culling Ritual because if we had all that stuff and cast that, and if even if we could just get food, if we had food chain in hand and a finale and cast Culling Ritual, we could probably just do our combo right from there and have cleared the board the entire way for us. It just turns our rocks into another form of mana after we use them. It's not just fast mana. By it, As soon as it produces five, it turns our rocks that we're destroying into bonus mana. We got two cuts. The only two I could say is Saw and Half and Horde and Broodlord. If we wanted to cut them out, I'm cool with cutting them. So we're cool on Broodlord and Saw and Half? Yeah. Yeah, cutting both of those. Well, let's look. What else in our deck could Saw and Half do? We could get a second Displacer Kitten. Get a second Bowmasters. We can get a second Ball Master. We can get a second Flesh Duplicant. We can get a second Hallbringer Horror. Oh, but, that's gross. Bow Masters on our turn is a no because they want it's a punishment. Oh, it rounds up right. It's a it's a punishment effect. So it's gonna punish the the Ristics, the Mystics, the One Rings. That that's all our uh our Orcus Bow Masters in here for. Yeah, it's just too good to not have. Hey, you've well, got to have an Orcus Bowmasters. If, if we don't get rid of Broodlord and Saw in half, the Dismember and something else, which what there's nothing else. if we else. get rid of Broodlord, keep Saw in half for the other pieces, and get rid of Saw, uh, Dismember? So Dismember and Broodlord. They both are tar destroys, but Dismember is gone, and Saw in half gives somebody two of something. Yeah, I mean, you want to target your own thing. Potentially getting two Displacer Kittens. Ungodly. Potentially two Gilded getting... Drakes. Oh, yeah. God. Because oh, it's God. under... It's an instant. Control. So you could be like, Gilded Drake comes into play. So with that trigger on the stack, saw and half Drake, make two more. But you don't have the first Drake to give. So do you get three creatures? So you, you get nothing. three creatures and you're only giving out two... Two twos. Tokens. Cut Broodlord and Dismember. All right. I think uh, we're back down to 72 <laughs> cards. Setting on 28 lands. Uh, counting Treasure Vault. We know that's our little a mana sink for us in case we get... It won't skunk us on infinite mana. Now, we're going to build our, man, our mana base and go from there. We're talking Bayou, Trop Underground Sea, and Trop. All right. What are our fetches? So, when it comes to fetches... Personally, yeah, Misty, I don't like off-color fetches. Well, guys, well, well, I use them in two-color decks. You're right. I am against the off-color fetches, too. In a two-color deck, they're great. Or one-color or something. Sure. I, I feel like if you're running fine. if you're running stuff like uh, Sensei's Divine in top, you could go off-color fetches, too. All right. Now, let's do... Should we do Shocks or Bond Lands? There's a debate here. I'm. I like. I both. love bond lands because I like bond lands because they come in untapped. They're basically duels. They're and basically I like duels sharks because you can fetch them. So I want. I do like. Those. All right. So we're gonna do what? Are we grave, breeding pool, and overgrown tomb. And what's the bond lands? Rejuvenating springs. Yeah, morphic pool. Undergrowth stadium. We need our exotic Mystic orchard. Confluence. Do we want uh, the channel lands? Oh, Otawara. Seiju, yeah. Otawara, and Takanuma. Okay. Uh, gemstone so, Caverns for the do we? of having it out on turn one. There's no uh, Grim, though. No Grim on Oh, yes, there is. We didn't do the Basalt. <laughs> the Basalt and Mesmeric does mill our whole shit. I think Basalt over Grim on this one. Yes, it is a two to three mana. And 
Yeah, but here's the reason. But the combo oh. potential. Because Grim's fast mana. Grim is fast mana, but we are running ri other rituals. We're also running uh, the mana vault up there. Basalt over Grim, I think that just makes more sense. Especially yeah, replace Grim Monolith with Basalt. I like that idea. Especially with the Mesmeric, mesmeric Orb? I agree. Grim Monolith is mana for this turn. Basalt Monolith is mana for next turn. Exotic Orchard, Forbidden Orchard, and Reflecting. Do we run? I do like Reflecting Pool. Do we run Forbidden? I think so, just because Timna is a thing. I think... Uh, Giving somebody a blocker to a Timna would be super helpful. Yeah. You're slowing down there at the Timna advantage. I mean, if you let Timna go, it's just going to go. Ragavan. Popping out Ragavan blocks. We've done that. Ragavan blocker. Ragavan's a what thing, bro. What do you guys bro. think of Emergent Zone? Allows us to play Flash. I don't hate it. I do hate colorless mana, but I don't think it's bad. Urza Saga? We forgot Veil of Autumn and Autumn's Veil. And Veil of Summer. Do you want to add Gaia's Cradle then? If you see if you see a Gaia's Cradle on no other land in your hand, and you can't get a creature out, that's a mulligan. I hate that, but I do love Cradle, but you're right. You're absolutely correct. That's a good point. And I have, too, enough been stuck with... Just, just like I want to note, I've been stuck with a turn one reflecting pool after Mulligan to five, and it was my only land. Same. I have two. Carpet of Flowers? And that's fine. lands and a Carpet of Flowers? We're going to have to get rid of a, a Mana Dork. Yeah, if you didn't put Guy or Sage in, cut Kami. Yeah, because the Deathrite Shaman just snipes too many important pieces on their side. What's our next yeah, land? We need a way of getting a... Elvish Spirit Guide. Our final land, Waterlog Grove, because you can sack it. To draw a card. Cephalic Coliseum. The green, blue. Cephal Cephalic Coliseum with the threshold. Cephalic Coliseum is another one. I think we're primarily blue, aren't we? Cephalic Coliseum. We draw three and then discard three. Digging three yeah. deep is dope. And with threshold, I don't think it's going to be hard for us to get there. No, I think we're going to be a threshold. We didn't run any Talisman, but we compensated that by running Mana Dorks. That helps us with the creatures in non-land permits in the graveyard. I would do Cephalic Coliseum for sure, because it's, it's the same cost as Waterlogged Grove. And if you're looking for a way to stop something, going three deep is way better than going just one. I think the interaction's good. I think the the combos are solid. It's like, let's endurance my whole graveyard back in the library with Conrad out. Final parting, because it sets, uh. it sets up the cauldron line. But it also sets the Conrad Hermit Druid lineup because you can just pitch. It does. Oh, let's just, see. You could just do. Um, you could pitch the Conrad. Cauldron Hermit get the Druid, Hermit the graveyard, Druid. Cauldron in the hand. Boom. That automatically puts a 1 1 counter on something else, like one of your mana dorks. Replace Besiege the Mirror with Final Parting. This seems more like a Final Parting deck. So I think we have us a fine deck here to, to work with. One of our next videos will be. Play testing the deck and see if we need modifications from there. Mm -hmm. I, maybe our next three videos, we'll each get a game in with it. So we can all have a, an opinion as a pilot. Of the